Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I just want to take a minute to uh, tell you about some recent experiences that I've had. Uh, but but first, I want to talk to you about what I just heard on the news a few minutes ago. Uh, I guess there are some islands. There's about 80 small islands that are facing hurricane winds right now. And I, I, I've prayed that uh, the Lord will turn those winds away and, and redirect them and spare the islands and the people. I'm asking you to join me in that prayer that uh, there's about a quarter of a million people living on those islands. And please, let, let's pray that the uh, um, storm moves away and they're, they're spared. And their property and their lives are spared. Now, let me just recount some things that have happened recently. I uh, maybe make you understand why I've sent a couple of people private messages just saying, I I'm very blessed today. How about you? I've had some wonderful things happening to me lately. Um, first, last night, uh, I got a phone call from uh, my nephew, uh, Ken. Uh, he lives uh, near Seattle, Washington. And he called me up. We had a great conversation. And he, uh, you know, we talked about his wonderful 10 year old daughter and what she's accomplishing in martial arts. And then we talked about the NBA and college basketball. And then, as usual, we, we talked about Jesus and the scriptures. Uh, see, Ken, uh, he's a Christian. Uh, he put his faith in Jesus Christ many years ago. I, I remember when I was tell him about Jesus, and uh, he was patient, and listened to me, and gave me a fair hearing, instead of thinking I was a crazy nut that just became some Jesus freak, but he heard me out, and uh, I gave him a book to read, a small book, called More Than a Carpenter, by Josh McDowell. He used to give those books out almost like Bible tracts, about maybe 80 pages, and they're very inexpensive, but it's a great apologetics book to prove to someone that the, the God exists, the Bible's true, and put, you must put your faith in Jesus or save your God. So he, he read that book, and he was persuaded, and he's been a believer, uh, a saint, uh, for many years now. So, as usual, we talk about the Bible and talk about Jesus. We got in this conversation about... Uh, um, what is the bare minimum for someone to be saved? This is a question that I've asked many people over the years in my private home Bible studies, in my street preaching among other street preachers here on YouTube. And uh, I've been actually very surprised that there there is not a universal agreement, a consensus on the bare minimum to be saved. But if you start asking these questions that people are, uh, you're going to find that, uh, that the answer is widely varied. Uh, uh, to me, the answer is answered directly. Uh, when Paul was asked the question, what must I do to be saved? And when Jesus was asked the question, what works must we do to do the works of God? These are direct questions asking Jesus and Paul, what do I have to do? What must I do? What is this bare minimum that God requires of me? And both Jesus and Paul said, believe. Believe on Jesus. That's the only thing they said. And so I accept that as the bare minimum. Put your faith on Jesus to save you, and he'll do it. Now, there's a lot of other things that people will add to that and say, you've got to know uh, a whole list of facts. And you've got to uh, make mental assent and really even believe in your heart that all these facts are true. And then some people say, not only believing, but even there's a list of things you must do. You've got to get water baptized, or you've got to change your life, and so on. So people have uh, a list of things, uh, as they, they include on this. This is the bare minimum you've got to do in order to be saved. So um, if you want an interesting experience, start asking people that question, and you'll find out that, uh, sadly, people... Many people don't understand how the simplicity of the cross, the simplicity of salvation, the free gift that's offered to us all. 
So when Ken and I were talking about this last night, uh, uh, we were talking about basically three key words, believe, faith, and trust. Now I made a video titled Faith, the One Requirement. And I made another video titled Believe Defined. So I will refer you to those two videos for a greater explanation of what those two words mean. Believe, faith, and trust are basically interchangeable. They all accomplish salvation. They're all slightly a little bit different. But uh, right now I want to talk about trust. Because um, sometimes a person will say, I, I'd like to believe, I just don't. I just can't. I can't make myself believe, can I? And I say, well, um, you, you can still be a Christian, uh, even though you're not 100% commit, convinced yet. You can still be a Christian, and then the Holy Spirit will convince you once the Holy Spirit lives inside you. Uh, but if you'll just do this, and it's, it's also like a, a reference to the, the point I made in the last video about Pascal's wager. Pascal was a philosopher that came up with the ideas, what have you got to lose? Put your faith in God, and so you can go to heaven, and if God doesn't really exist, what have you lost? But if God does exist, and he requires your faith, then at least you've satisfied that requirement, and you get to go to heaven. So that's Pascal's wager, and that's what I would say to someone. Look, maybe you don't believe everything yet. Maybe you have questions about uh, creationism and the, and the biblical account of, of Adam and Eve and all these things. Um, maybe you'll never have a complete, 100% understanding and belief in everything in the Bible. But you can do one thing. You can choose to trust Jesus. And the, the illustration that uh, uh, I would use is... Uh, in Pascal's wager, the word wager means to place a bet on something. And I live here in Las Vegas, Sin City, but it's also called the gambling capital of the world. And there's a term very popular here that called I'm all in, uh, especially used in poker tournaments. When you're playing poker, let's say you have $100,000 in chips. And you decide you're going to bet every single chip on this one hand. You're not holding anything back. You're not going to bet 50,000 on this hand and hold 50,000 back for some other hand, hopefully that maybe the other hand will be better. The other hand will succeed, whereas this may fail. No, you're all in. You're going to bet everything you've got on this one hand. Well, that's what I would ask someone to do regarding Jesus. Bet everything on Jesus. Put... Um, put all of your faith, all of your belief, all of your trust in this person, Jesus Christ, to save you. Don't think that, that uh, uh, well, I'll bet 50% on Jesus, and I'm going to bet 50% also on the Pope and, and Catholic religion, practicing that religion. Or uh, I'll bet 50% on Jesus and and uh, I'm going to put 50% on myself because there's some something I've got to do. I've got to perform. I've got to follow the commandments or I've got to live a moral life. I've got to repent of my sins. I've got to do all these things to satisfy God. So I bet half on Jesus and half on me. Now, I'm asking you to be all in on Jesus. Bet everything on Jesus. Put your faith, your confidence completely on Jesus. So here's a, a good illustration of what is required. Just don't put your faith, don't believe in your, your own ability at all. Instead, believe in the promises of Jesus, the ability of Jesus. Put your faith in him and trust him. Now, another illustration uh, I like is from uh, one of the Indiana Jones movies. Indiana Jones is standing on a precipice and if he looks forward, he sees that there's no end in sight to the fall. It's like a bottomless pit and certain death if he steps forward. But he was told, he was promised that he could walk across that precipice to the other side. But it didn't appear that there was any bridge there. He couldn't see the bridge. 
But the scripture says that faith is the substance of things hoped for. He hoped that there was really a bridge there. It's the evidence of things not seen. He didn't see the bridge, but he was told there is one and he can walk across it. But if he took a step forward and there was no bridge, he'd fall to certain death. So would he trust what he was told and take that step, the step of faith, the leap of faith? Well, Indiana Jones put his foot out and stepped out and instead of falling down into the abyss, his foot landed on a bridge that became visible as soon as he took the step and he was able to walk across. So to me, that's what salvation is. Will you trust Jesus? Jesus said he's the only way to get into heaven. Uh, Jesus said he will give you eternal life if you believe in him. Will you trust him? Will you believe in his ability to give you eternal life? Will you believe in his faithfulness to keep that promise? Will you take that step of faith? Will you bet everything on Jesus? Will you be all in on Jesus? Now, I want to end the video by just talking about some recent experiences I've had and why I sent this little comment to some people today saying, I feel really blessed today. How about you? Uh, my wife and I went to a Arby's for lunch. <laughs> and while we're in line to place our order, a young man ahead of us uh, told the clerk he wanted to buy a, my wife and me to lunch. He was put it on his card. And he insisted. And, and uh, I believe that if someone wants to give a gift to someone, we should they should accept the gift. It's, it would be offensive to say no after they've insisted. Uh, you know, I could afford to buy my lunch. I could afford to buy my wife lunch. But he wanted to do it for me, and so I, we thanked him. And uh, we struck up an interesting conversation with him. I looked at him and surmised. I said, uh, are you in the military? I, I think that you're in the military and you're a Christian. He said, yes, you're right. I mean, he had retired, recently retired from the military. He's, we ended up having lunch, sitting at the table next to him and having a wonderful conversation. And he has uh, 37 years old. His name is Brandon. And he's retired from the military. Uh, so we had a wonderful conversation with him. And it was just one example I can give you of the kinds of things that happen to me all the time. Uh, this last year was very, very difficult for me. 2014 was the hardest year of my life. I had uh, three surgeries. I was in the hospital five different times, total of 27 days, a lot of difficult times getting through that. And yet I was blessed over and over again by people with their the kindness, with their gifts. I've never solicited any gifts, and I, I hope you don't misconstrue this now. I, I'm not uh, soliciting any kind of gifts or help from me now, but but I've been blessed. Recently, I made a video about Brother Ben, who's just sent me a computer, the computer I'm using right now. And, and he sent it because he, he discerned that I needed a computer, and I, I needed his his help and, and the, the software that he put in and, and, and the technical support that he's given me. And so over and over again, people are helping me. And I don't think it's just because, you know, they're trying to do some, do a good deed. I think the Holy Spirit is prompting them to do it. And uh, so I'm very thankful. And I, I hope that uh, you are also being blessed. I'm pretty sure you are. Uh, I'm pretty sure that if you look at your life and really analyze it, you'll see that you are blessed a lot. And I hope you will count your blessings because it will keep things in perspective. Even as you go through difficult times and there's problems in your life, realize that you're still being blessed over and over again. I'm blessed way beyond anything I've ever deserved. Uh, so, 
All right, uh, I just wanted to uh, make everybody aware of the wonderful things that have been happening to me and the conversations with my nephew, Ken. He's also my brother because he's born again. He's a saint. He's a brother in Christ. So um, if you're watching now and, you, and you've been following my videos and uh, making comments, I appreciate that. Your encouragement is a great blessing to me also. Uh, if you are not familiar with me and you're, and you're not really that familiar with Jesus, then I, I hope this video made it clear to you that the, all, all God really is requiring of you is, is to put your faith in Jesus, believe in him for salvation, trust him. He says that he's God. He became a man so he could die for our sins. And he was faithful. He went to the cross willingly, he died for our sins. Now our, all of our sins are paid for. Then he said he would raise himself from the dead after three days, and he did it. He, for 30 days, he walked around and showed himself to people. He was resurrected. He proved he has power over life and death, and he promised life everlasting to everyone who calls on his name, who believes in him. Believes on, believes on the Lord Jesus. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus for salvation and he will give it to you. So I'm asking you to trust him. Believe he He does have the ability to give you eternal life exclusively. No one else can do it but him. Believe that he uh, will keep that promise. He is faithful to give it to you. And you'll receive it. The Holy Spirit will immediately take up residence in you. You'll be indwelled with the Holy Spirit, sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. You'll be transformed into a new creature, a child of God, and the Holy Spirit will begin a great transformation that will take place over your remainder of your life. So, uh, all right, be blessed. Most important of all, be saved. Receive the gift of salvation from Jesus. And uh, if you do, please make a comment and let me know. So bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.